Hello and welcome to the channel again. We're going to be watching Inside Star Citizen Initiative Indicative. Uh, and this one looks like it might have something to do with engineering and such. Uh, so why don't we get into it and look. 323 is just launched a wave Those one. Those of you playing Star Citizen for the last I am month have no been experiencing longer a, a new kind of mission chain for a new kind of global event called the Overdrive Initiative. The five part oh, prelude to the return of a newly improved Xeno threat arriving in the up. I did not play this mission at all uh, because the prize was the ability to buy something I cannot afford. <laughs> so it seemed pointless, but I don't know. People said the mission was good. Let me know if you Coming played it in Coming out at 323. And so this week, we went to the folks who created it to discover their original intentions, to hear their reactions to how it's been going, and to get a look at what okay. lies ahead for this and additional initiatives leading up to 4.0 and beyond. I, initiatives okay i guess i don't i have a feeling this is not going to be a good isc if it's just about a mission i was hoping they would talk about more stuff coming up in the future not stuff they've already done overdrive initiative codenamed hex penetrator was an attempt for us to uh, dip our toes into new events and quest chains for uh, players to progress immediately. He, he looks or like over a character a, created uh, in a custom, a character, a new service. character customizer. Uh, we need to do things that um, increase engagement and get players playing together. So the overdrive was our way of experimenting with some stuff that's most common in other MMOs and trying to see if it's a good fit for us. It's a five phase mission that prepares the players for the Central Thread event. And it's one of the first times that we've actually kind of done a longer storyline across multiple contracts rather than just here's just one. So in this case, we try to release the new missions weekly. Yeah, so they're depending on feedback. This is something that uh, they do need to do more often now is starting to create missions that uh, are story missions. So like, for instance, when a new player joins, they get a contract that does leads them to this person. Then after that, it leads them to the next person and gets them moving through the verse. Because right now, one of the obviously big issues with Star Citizen is figuring out what the hell to do. If you're a new player, uh, you really do have to just, you have to take initiative to do stuff. It's not usually thrown in your face. But these ones where it pops up and says, hey, you have a mission to do this thing, uh, and then puts you on multiple missions in a row, that is useful. Uh, and that's something I hope to see in the future when it comes to new player onboarding. Because uh, right now, the, the tutorial sucks. What they need to do is have a mission that gets them doing stuff like mining. And then you go and mine, and then at the end of the, the mining mission, you give the ship back, and they say, hey, if you like it, though, you can go rent one. But it gives you a taste of the gameplay loops and teaches you along the way. Uh, and they can Again, do that with and, these and information and data. Missions. We either shorten it a bit or take a bit longer. And the idea is that we run it for a phase. It's somewhat grindable content that gets harder uh, with each new one that you do. And it's all towards some sort of greater narrative. It's more uh, giving the players a deeper understand of the lore of the game and prepare them in advance to the Sino thread at the end of a long time mission qu quest chain. So let's start with phase one. The phase one was a data heist where the player had to go down and recover some data off of servers. We gave it a bit of a narrative spin where the CDF has detected a lot of their security bunkers going offline or being taken over that by wasn't with senior the threat data soldiers. hacking they showed them. And they're recruiting any willing and able body. Recruiting, terrorizing. <laughs> And you have to go and infiltrate and get. Okay, hold on. I gotta call out whoever's flying that. Who just sits there and takes it? You gotta move around, bud. They're just, they're just tanking it. And you have to go and infiltrate and get captured the data to figure out what you're doing. And keep the server room protected until the hacking is done. We balance this for all of the AI to be the tough part of it, along with the servers. So the further up through the mission chain you got, you got less time to recover each server and turn the cooling off. 
Warning. Security breach. Response. And you have more AI coming to attack you. One of the main key differences that uh, I had the joy of implementing is we took some of the tech from Squadron over, where it's not just Xenofret attacking you, but they're also putting a lot of pressure going into the server room. You might spot some of the Xenofret people actually rushing down into the server room to try and check all the covers to see where you're at. So they, uh, a lot of good feedback so far. I think phase one went well. We did a lot of work on like improving the AI. Some people getting the intended experience that we have designed where the AI are reactive, where everything's working perfectly. Some people have spotted some of the AI rushing to the server room and they were like, I didn't even know that AI can sprint at me. Like, is that new? And other people who are, you know, reporting the chip didn't insert or the AI aren't as reactive as we'd have liked. These are all things that we, we take down uh, internally I mean, that's a server and we look to improve right? constantly to better the experience. There's not life. much that can be done about AI performance until server meshing is implemented better. Well, like implemented at a larger scale. People seem quite pleased with the new kind of flow of things and, and the AI being way more accurate and, and scary. More John Wick, less couch potato. Depend on the number of players, it gets really tricky because there's a difficulty curve between the first time you try the mission till the last one. The first time is quite easy to get with two, four people, but since you get to the end, it gets really hard to achieve it. So are these, people are these missions live now? Like, like if I can, I go do phase one as well, because I might, I might give it a try then while I wait. Coming with like twenty to thirty people just to raid that one bunker, which is, in my opinion, a bit of overkill, but it's really cool to see. So like, I if I if I missed a, a phase. Like, I can't miss it. Like, I can just go do phase one, right? Ah, okay. So phase two is then a, a bounty recovery mission. Where you have to go and find so many Xenofred people. The Seabile Force detect that there is a, a Xenofred uh, target that has a decryption key that will allow us to discover uh, information about the Xenofred movement. But it's encrypted and the CDF has then located some high-value targets from Xenothreat, which there are holding like a, a pay, decryption a key. payment reward? So you have to go out there, take them out, steal their encryption key. Target destroyed. And then bring it to one of the drop-off points. Kill them, steal it, and uh, deliver it. We can get more intel on uh, what Xenothreat's planning next. These missions used to exist way back when in the PU, but they were taken out because they were broken. So we made an effort to fix these up and then reuse them in this phase. My main mission was to grab It's so the funny, like, them we... showcasing all this, like, knowing, like, the new EVAs on the way, the new HUDs on the way, um, all this new stuff's on the way, and seeing <laughs> all the old stuff still being, like, shown on their, their ISCs. You already have there. I merged it with the delivery the one. New, uh, Be sure, like, the decryption key was a spawn. Player interaction system. And do that merge between both missions into one main mission uh, style. Try the cargo channel. The idea, was, again, was these scale up and get more difficult as you go. But uh, on release, there was a bug which actually made some of them a little bit easier, as I have seen people and also had messages saying stuff like, hey, the Xeno threat overdrive the initiative phase two's ace and then 30 minutes later might have spoken a little bit prematurely and then a massive wall about <laughs> something that might be bugged so thanks for that army esports guy one of the most ridiculous things that i saw on phase two is the uh, hover bikes people using three uh, dragonflies to take down the hammerhead which is just absolutely ridiculous <laughs> I've, i don't know what to say that with. Well done. Um, we'll look to make the AI respond to dragonflies and actually like kill you because there's no way you should be able to kill a hammerhead in that vehicle. So <laughs> I have uh, contradictory feelings because it's like I put so much effort on this mission and because of balance issue, uh, you see these people taking the mission in a different way. But in the other side, it's fun to see the pro players that we have challenge themselves yeah, uh, yeah, with no. our missions. I, that's something to always be excited about. People are engaging with your content. That's all that matters. Um, at the end of the day, yeah, if it's not working exactly the way you want, that's fine. If people are still having fun 
then you've just made a successful thing, in my opinion. I, You shouldn't always, and this is why I don't like balance checks too often. I like players to have to work around. If something gets overpowered, let them find solutions to it. Unless it's clearly broken, like someone can run through walls, right? Like that that shouldn't exist in the world. But I, I'm, I've i always been of the, the mindset that if something is broken or a player is exploiting something, let the community find a way around that and if it gets to the point where you know you're multiple months in and there's still no new meta has developed to counter it then then change it but trying too hard to force people into the exact way you want them to play makes a game very narrow in its potential scope phase three is xenothread being a bit more brazen they realize that their setup has not been working so well, so they're just doing all-out incursions. They're popping uh, up randomly around Stanton uh, with a massive combat fleet. The idea in normal MMOs is you turn up, you get entered into some sort of quest, and it's like, this thing's happening, engage with it. And if you leave the area, you sort of, the quest is removed. The incursion is our first step into trying to do that uh, with the current system we have. It's a challenging thing that you will need to get collaboration between the different players to be able to tackle down those ships. So the idea is you go to a location and there's lots of ships. And everyone, it's, it's, it's a server-wide event. So even if you've not done phase one or phase two of oh, overdrive, okay. you can still do phase three. It won't skip your progress. You still have to complete the previous phases. But the idea of it's kind of a, this is happening right now in world for everybody. Everybody needs to get here and help us destroy all of these ships. What's interesting to me there is that when we played it, it was quite difficult and we needed to cooperate and stay coordinated to take down like the big amount of, of ships that needs to of be course. killed. So as of recording this, this hasn't happened. Uh, what I expect to happen is that um, some lovely players will turn up in a bunch of dragonflies and <laughs> just make it all look like so. Thanks in advance. <laughs> How does this make you feel? <laughs> I love dragonflies, I got one. <laughs> In phase four, we kind of split it into two subsections. So phase four, we'll have a section that is a comma ray, and then there's is like phase a four ray, which is uh, Korea. First phase is three comma rays back to back are being taken down by uh, Xenothread operatives. and then you have to go in and stop them. And in the meantime, as you're doing so, be ready to face some ships. They're guarding oh, they're it, mines. and you're uh, tasked to reactivate the Comare. When you do, they're throwing everything they got at you. Um, try to reconnect to the Comare. Obviously, these are crucial if they to the work. functioning of the law and communications around the planet they get taken down from, so you need to repair them. We've added some fun little surprises and changes to them, so it's not just gonna be your generic comma ray run that people are used to. And once the comma ray is reactivated, the turrets come back online and uh, help you in the fight. Xenothreat missions are... Apart uh, from uh, the comma ray being guarded, it's all essentially more focusing ship on combat. the combat. We're throwing a lot of ships on you, as well as the Vanguard ships are Fighting hacking big ships. into the comma ray while you're re-establishing the connection. So you need to focus your fire on those ships before targeting all of the escort ships. Target destroyed. But this is something the idea else. Is that this is a five Some players phase would be dealing thing. with the outside defenses and other players would be trying to actually get in there and sort of make sure the comrade is handled. After you've done enough of these, it turns out that it was all a red herring. And actually, they're doing an all-out assault on Korea to wipe the entire criminal database and sow some chaos so they can plan something more sinister. Which you're being tasked to all fly to Korea and take out the incursion of Solar. Is this really hard to want to play this, knowing 323 is right around the corner? So phase you five know? is our events refractory period, just kind of cool off. And the reason we do this is actually a sort of tried and true 
game design thing where if we keep giving you constant action, uh, your dopamine levels are sky high and then stuff starts to get really boring. As such, people turning up in dragonflies to kill a hammerhead, clearly not enjoying this normal game. So phase five is a delivery mission where you have to go bring supplies to the jump point from Pirate of Stanton. Salvage? Because you're fine. aware the Xenophred's about to raid you, and you want to make sure you're prepared for that big battle. I don't really care about armor. I have so much armor. <laughs> so what we do is we, we have little respites where the action peaks down, and then we'll peak it back up. And because phase six is the whole Xenophred event, which is a huge battle, and it's going to be hopefully very difficult, we have a little bit of a respite. Not too much when you do phase five and you have to I do want these more of these delivery puzzles, missions. Though. Like, there will be more puzzles, AI please. there to try and stop you. But it won't be as big as a battle as the previous phases that you would have seen. The jump point itself isn't a whole lot different from any other station, aside from that it looks way cooler because, you know, we're building up. Welcome to Pyra soon. People will get to Pyra soon. Landing complete. But it's also just a very, very, very far way for you to go. Because you're always supplying to Pyro, oh, is this, is this you don't know where station? you're picking your supplies from. So it can either be a very quick jump or it can be a very short jump. And now for phase six, Xenofret, which you've all played, but okay. we've... It's funny because they're showing phase six with the new UI and everything. So I guess that's gonna come out with 323? Is that why they're doing this or? And now for phase six, Xenofret, which you've all played, but we've made changes to it. We have updated the size of some of the boxes. So they're a bit more difficult to handle. You have to be more aware. Some of them will require a dedicated tractor beam. Yeah, so There's this is the original Xeno Threat That will help you stuff. out within, inside phase two of Xeno Threat, which is the protect and resupply of the Javelin. And then the showdown has had a whole rework based on some feedback and some cool thoughts we had from the Capture the Idris event that we did. Dragonfly. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil any more of that, but stay tuned. Try and board it. So the overdrive is our first sort of foray into quest missions in an MMO. Uh, things that are meant to be repeatable, grindable, uh, meant to encourage the community spirit and people to play together. This is the kind of direction we were starting to head in when it comes to these quest chain missions. This won't be the last one you see. The thing is, like, the so, data, so phase one, the data hacking, are, again, it's just, it's hard to get excited about that kind of mission because it's just a bunker mission. You press a button, that's it. There is, like, sure you have to put codes in, but it's still not the hacking gameplay loop that they started to show quite, like, what was that, like, a year, year and a half ago now? Like, there, there's these deep gameplay loops that I think we all love Star Citizen for that are implemented in other areas like mining and, and salvage and all that, but it just doesn't exist uh, in some of these other areas yet. They make it hard to be excited to play those things, in my opinion, because I know what they will be um, and that this is just patchwork until we get there, uh, which is why I'm excited they don't, they're not coming out with a million patches anymore they're just making large dumps with complete features like 323 granted a lot of those came from uh uh squadron 42 that was already you know being built but the i want that i want things that are driven towards a release state right not just have things to to keep the player base happy for now because when you're building a game for people to play while also trying to keep in mind the end product design, you're going to have to balance stuff so it works now, even though you know that's not how it's gonna be at the end product when the other systems get built into the game and interact with the currently existing systems. So I'm, uh, it's, it's hard sometimes to get excited for certain features knowing that they're going to change. 
So what we're hoping to achieve with Overdrive Initiative is more quest change and mission linking, more in line with other MMOs that are on the market, which uh, for a more enjoyable... The problem is that a lot of the player base is really short-sighted. ...more disconnected modules. Therefore, CIG a has bit to be short-sighted to, well, to keep them happy. ...to become more a game. One thing I'd like people to appreciate is that when Chris himself and Rich asked us during some of the reviews as we were making the missions, they asked how the balancing went and if it was difficult. And both Elliot and I's response were, well, for us, it's really, really difficult, but we are kind of terrible pilots anyway. I saw players in the forums saying that they have now motivation to every Friday go back to the game and tackle the new mission. For the development side, what we're trying to achieve with this That's is just I, I appreciate uh, new that. ways of making missions, make gameplay for players uh, more fun. We're constantly evolving and making the game better. Uh, seeing feedback, we have our own internal thoughts of how we think it well. We've done our post-mortems, and we know how we're going to improve it for the next one. So from here on out, it's only going to get better and better, and we're going to see more and more quest chains come in. It so what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that the Overdrive Initiative has been a fun new addition to the Persistent Universe that touches an entire host of gameplay features for Star Citizen. That if there's one thing you can always count on, it's that the Star Citizens themselves are gonna find emergent solutions to the challenges at hand. And that while this may be just the first gated mission chain for the Persistent Universe, it definitely won't be the last as it sets the stage for a proper welcome to Pyro during our journey to 4.0 this summer. And if you haven't played the Overdrive Initiative yet, there's still time to play all five phases That's starting the first, tomorrow. And is that the first time we got really any kind of indication of when they're aiming for 4.0? You said summer. I don't think they've said that outside of um, anywhere else, eh? Because hmm. it would suck if they went to ISC, or sorry, ISC, uh, SitCon again this year. And still didn't have pyro out considering that was last year's big thing so it makes sense they want to get it out and the way server meshing is going right now looks like they're in a really good position to have pyro out but um this was the first time they indicated when it was going to be uh i think right there was saying this summer so and it seems like they're confident if they're saying it and because i think this year's sitcon is going to be more focused on squadron 42 release my prediction uh Last summer, before sitcom, my prediction was we're going to get Squadron 42 Q1 2025. If we get it sooner than that, great. But that that's my prediction. I'm still sticking with that right now. I think we're going to get a release date at this sitcom, but it's going to be for early 2025. And then Star Citizen, I still think is a 2026, um, 2026 release. And I actually said 2026 back in 2019. That was uh, based off the work left to be done. And running until the release of Alpha 323. From Actually, inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you. And we'll see you all here next week. If you guys want, oh, it looks like there's an anything. But I'm actually working on a script right now for what Star Citizen needs for a 1.0 release. If you guys want to see my thoughts on what it would need to be actually released. Stay tuned to my main channel, at LeafX. Link will be below if you're on YouTube. Uh, if you're in chat here, you can just go here. Uh, but that'll be coming out soon. I'm hoping to have that out next week. You have to explain Hex Penetrator. Um, so Hex Penetrator is an anagram for pre xeno threat, but we know that people data mine our source code, <laughs> so I just came up with a random anagram that was very inappropriate. Um, I didn't think it was going to last, and then, unfortunately, once it was there, people all started referring in documentations like, oh, so the hex penetrator mission's this, and like this, that, like this and that, and I was like, well, I can't change it now. It's going to confuse everybody, so my lasting legacy in this company is a mission called Hex Penetrator. How does Fritz Roberts feel about this? He laughed, then told us to change it, and we forgot. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, in terms of ISC episode, I mean, editing, storytelling, all that was good, you know, but overall, that's a five out of 10 for me. I don't really care to watch anything about a mission. Like, 
In my opinion, this should have been a separate thing. Inside Star Citizen for me is let's look at the development and what's upcoming rather than what's behind us. And I know there's a phase upcoming too, but uh, yeah, I, I, I would have wished this would have been more on features. Like again, remember sprint reports? You guys remember sprint reports? I miss sprint reports. I want to know about those little things that may or may not come. Like the terrain deformation tool that uh, River Guy was working on, you know? Um, I want to see that kind of stuff. I want to see those those things where developers are having fun building things. And I don't really care too much about these missions. As I said, I'm looking for features and tech <coughs> and release. And these kind of missions, while cool, are all just a step um, to keep us occupied and distracted until the game releases. Um, so I don't care about it too much. I know it's fun. Like uh, I'm probably going to go play the mission. Like it looks fun. I just don't think it needed an episode on it, to be honest. So in terms of episode rating, yeah, probably five out of 10. Do I like, uh, happy the content exists? Yes, very much, very much. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I don't know. If you want to see more of the content like this, by the way, this channel here, might just become my main Star Citizen channel. I'm thinking of starting on my LeafX channel, doing other games as well, but in the same style. There'll still be Star Citizen content there, but I've noticed the content people are, are attracted to is not Star Citizen specific content. It's stuff that's consumable by a larger uh, audience anyways, but I still wanna keep making Star Citizen content. So this is the right channel to be at if you're already here. If you're just joining for the first time, hit subscribe if you wanna see my other content. Go over to my LeafX channel. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep gaming hard.